Hello, Angel. <laughs> Can you hear us? <laughs> this this is my first time. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone well so far. Dick and I. He, Dick's my technical advisor, sitting behind, so <laughs> and and I'm sitting there going, "Where are they? Where are they?" <laughs> Yeah, but thanks for having us. No, thank you so much for joining us today. As I was just saying to everyone watching, um, we're doing this very special Q&A with yourself today. Um, so thank you so, so much um, for letting us do this with you because I know lots of people have been excited about it. Um, but yeah, just to, for everyone watching, it's to celebrate the launch of Angel's new Awesome Winter Collection. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about her new stuff and then go into the questions that you guys have been sending in. Um, but yeah, so thank you, Angel. You start by telling us how everything is at the moment. How's the chateau? How have you guys been doing and the kids and everything? Oh, we're really well, thank you. We um, uh, we got back. Um, well, we had the spring fair in February, uh, which was fantastic. The launch of the collection, all sort of very, very exciting. Um, and life was quite normal. And then Dick and I and the kids, we did um, a tour, um, which was sort of really exciting. Got back on on a Wednesday, and actually by. By the Monday, the whole of France had locked down. And I mean, we you know we're the forever optimists, and we <laughs> we really didn't know uh, what was ahead of us. And and actually, just recently, we made the decision um, because we were doing it in baby steps up until that point that we um, that we're not open for the year. And it's been it's been sort of lovely because we've had lots of nice family time, and we've been in the garden lots and in the yeah. kitchen, and that's been, I guess. Um, a little gift to a lot of people but it's also been you know interesting we will have lost um, a, a year of income so we've had to di diversify um, and and there's been a lot of sort of you know um, uncertainty with with all the weddings and events and, and what have you so it's um it's been <laughs> it's been definitely an interesting year I think <laughs> I describe it as <laughs> yeah hopefully onwards and upwards though <laughs> that's all we can hope for <laughs> oh, look I'm still the forever optimist Miss, you know and um and I will try and see sort of the positiveness um and 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 as I said to a lot of the the buyers I'm often you know trying to sort of settle a little bit when we get to uh celebrate again and all hug can you imagine how that's going to feel <laughs> or, how can you make all the stuff yeah. that we just all took for granted like going to going to the shops and getting on a train <laughs> or a plane I know all those things we won't take for granted anymore, which is brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Going to the shop and buying fabric. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. It'll all get back to normal. Brilliant. So, um, thank you very much, um, Pat. Um, we're going to start today, I think, by um, going through some of your new designs. We've got some here, um, which we've popped on some boards for the new fabrics that we have launched. Um, but would you like to start by giving us a bit of an introduction to the new collection? And yes. And then we'll to some of the new designs. Yeah. Now I've not got my glasses on, so I can't. Have you got the? Is that the Anna, the Chateau de Anne Man? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my husband. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm working on a phone, and you're and you're so far away. <laughs> so, in, inspired by all the actual faux taxidermy that we have here um, anyone that sort of followed the show um, um, will have will have seen the giraffe <laughs> um, and, and and the zebra and obviously the unicorns Arthur thinks they're evil uh, we've got a couple don't he thinks they're that they're magical and um, and they are actually sort of um, illustrations of the real thing um, this isn't a plug to them but I love them they're a Welsh um, couple that make actually all the original um, faux taxidermy by hands um yeah. so we've got them scattered um, around broke, broken here um they um around the chateau and actually i wanted to do something a little bit playful like this this year um and and it was it was just you know why not and um, everything that that i design has has a reason for being designed I don't sort of just come up with something um it's got to have a feeling at a heart or or sort of be in the chateau so that that yeah. sort of just seemed a perfect way to do it and you know it's in my style <laughs> yeah no i love this one i think this is perfect um yeah, I definitely, it's definitely one of my favourites of the new ones. Um, and then next up we've got um, the Lily Garden, which obviously comes in um, a couple of colourways. Um, yeah, it comes in the blue, blue and the white, um, which actually comes a little question for, for later. Um, we, 
We went to Monet Garden last year. <laughs> it is... Did, what's the name of the Monet Garden? Um, Givenchy. Uh, uh, Giverny. Giverny. <laughs> I had a, had a very far for a second. Giverny. It is, um, you know, a couple of hours from here, sort of uh, west of Paris. Yeah. And it is... Um, it's, it's a magical place. Um, you know, it's where, where Monet did a lot of, of, of his stuff. And we took the family and, and the children there. Um, and... We <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, we're having a bit of a live a live Frozen like, Angel Delight. Frozen Angel Delight. <laughs> <laughs> so so we went to the Monet Garden last year, yes. a massive source of inspiration. Um and when we come back we actually <laughs> um we planted loads of lilies uh and, and, and actually this this was totally inspired by that. again, sort of quite geometric in, in its way, but when you sort of look at those flowers this year they have blossomed so much. Dick and I can't stop taking pictures of the actual lilies. Um, and, and they're just yeah, the most incredible. They, oh, I don't know, maybe it's our photography skills. We, we can never do them justice. Um, I love this one. It's very sweet, very gentle. Um, and, 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 I, and I can't wait to sort of get, get it in everywhere in the chateau. Have you got some somewhere in mind that you're going to place this one? <laughs> well, I think I'm going to do it um, in the hallway that, that takes... Dick's looking at me now. <laughs> Carry on, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she she it yet. <laughs> causing an argument, thank you. Um, I'm probably going to do it down the stairway because um, the brides walk down the stairway to come out of the yeah. boot room, and I think it's a really calming. Um, I don't know if it's lilies and maybe my association with water, yeah. but I'm going to probably do it there. And I'm sort of working out which colour or maybe one of each down. So that I'll do that in the wallpaper, definitely. Oh. And I already have, because we had a photo shoot here a couple of weeks ago. I've already got it up in the potagery, actually, on, on the bed. It looks lovely. Yeah, it's, it is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And it sounds lovely to be on the walls. Um, down the staircase, so I look forward to seeing that one. Um, <laughs> so next up is uh, the Nouveau wallpaper. Do you want to talk us through this one? So, is that, sorry, can't, can't... That's the Nouveau wallpaper. Oh, yeah, the, the wallpaper. I've got a cushion here. So, well, if I'm honest with you, this was this was a, a no-brainer for where, where we was. I'm sitting in the honeymoon um, suite, the wallpaper museum, the original one, and we always talked about when we had, like, enough designs that we would do, you know, a version of this. And what's really nice is that as I... You know, fingers crossed. Hopefully, as I um, evolve um, as a designer, then we can sort of do little exclusive runs because this is this is an easy thing to sort of change and have different. And and they look so nice together, sort of you know, even and changing sort of the the edging and the back ends. Um, and and I think hopefully when so maybe five years when we look back and we'll say oh yeah this is the wallpaper museum because it's become such a classic um you know iconic and it was an accident yeah. you know um, uh, but it's taken on a personality can you hear this you hear the thunder and the, no, wallpaper hear it. <laughs> the wallpaper museum has taken on a life of its own honestly it's got its own personality people from around the world yeah come and turn up at the chateau to come to the museum and I and I sort of have to say oh oh it's not exactly a museum <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, it's a turret in our, in our honeymoon suite we've got a wedding going on you can't go in there <laughs> so, so we we will carry on um doing um like exclusives and limited editions of this because I'd like to capture a, a period of time in it I think that'll be the you know the dream yeah, no, it's really beautiful. I love how you've used the designs together and they work so beautifully together. Not that it's such a, a surprise because they are beautiful designs, but when you put them <laughs> all so together, you're like, oh, wow. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and some of them are different, but... So go on, Gemma. <laughs> That's fine. I was just going to move on to the next. Um, but yeah, I do do love that one. And um, we've had lots of um, people um, who've been excited about that one already. So um, we've <laughs> recently seen the previous all paper one. So that's really lovely. Um, so this one, I've got the honeycomb. If you can <laughs> I don't know if you know that we oh I can finally see the picture of me um I don't know if you know that we got bees last year um Dick has yes. been um a beekeeper for most yes. how many years more than you need to know more than I need to know <laughs> you told me <laughs> um and we did go out as a family um last year and I have to say I I 
I absolutely pooed my pants. <laughs> like, and so did Dorothy. Dick and Arthur were fabulous. Um, this, this is sort of an extension of the of the Pataji collection. I quite like it because it's it's actually it's it's quite modern because it's a bit ge- geometric. Um, I think it really sits nicely and sort of very complementary with with something that's a little bit busier as well. So, yeah, brilliant. No, that's yeah, lovely. And I love the story behind the bees as well. <laughs> beekeeping honestly take my hat off to anyone that's a beekeeper but we've got so much love and love this year well exactly you re- reap the rewards a bit don't you um, and then the final one that we've got is the heron um, nouveau, nouveau design so so it's called the nova heron partly because obviously it, you know it's art nouveau in, in its style um but but we did something, an initial of this sort of um, co- um, collaboration with, with Belfield. Oh, I'm just going to pressure because I think that's what... At the, um, at, at the start of the collaboration um, uh, with Belfield, um, my inspiration was that Dorothy um, looks out the window, gets really excited. Every morning we have a heron that's outside um, our window. And, yes. and I name it the Dorothy Heron. She knows it because it's a little bit of a, a, of a heart. Um, and sorry, I keep, I keep losing a little bit. There we go. Um, and so we did a version with a slightly different handwriting. But as time has, has, has evolved, I really realised that this, this is my handwriting. So this is sort of like a relaunch of a really beautiful um, shape that I love. And, yeah. and this was sort of going to make some of the questions. But the inspiration is, is, is you know, is, is here, is stories that happen. And then when you see things that you love and you look at them a bit closely, they've got a beautiful shape if you think. Yeah, definitely. Oh, sorry, I think, I think we're just frozen again. Just bear with us. Pop in the comments if you're still with us, um, which one of Angels and Design Designs is your favourite? Um, and what would you use them for? Where would you use them in your home? Or what, what next project have you got? Have you got some curtains or a nice cushion on the... Um, I'd love to know. I'll just bear with us a second while we try and get um, Angel and Dick back with us. Um, we got to the back. Hello, my lovely <laughs> <story. laughs> Don't worry, don't worry at all. I'm waffling. I do apologise, right. I've been waiting. We're losing you again, Angel. And is it, the thunderstorm has arrived just at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so so slow. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you perfectly. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> Don't apologise. It's, it's, you can't help it at all. Um, well, bear, bear with us. Um, perfect. Okay. Should we move on from your designs and gave you some of your questions. We did have a couple of questions about sort of your design process and um, so we just wanted to quickly ask you those. Um, one of them was if you had to pick one design from your whole collection, new and old, what would be your favourite? And that was from Angela Brown. <laughs> Is there a particular one that oh. you like? It, it's like choosing a child. Am I allowed to be really <laughs> and not give you an answer because I love them all for different reasons. You know, I love the 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 Dorothy heart. You know, the the heaven yeah. the heaven because it's Dorothy. I love the potagery because um, uh, Dick, Dick named the potagery sweet. Love the wallpaper because um, because of the story. If I yeah. was gonna isolate one, I would say the wallpaper museum. Not because of the design, but because of the story. You know, how us turning up here and us finding the history of the entire chateaus, um, um, you know, uh, interior design in a wardrobe. You yes. can't write that. And and I think that's what's made this particular room. And also, I feel like this room kind of this was the story in the first show that that took people's imagination um, and, and sort of like unknown to me, kind of launched me into that area because, you know, 
back then I wasn't wasn't an interior designer really I was a businesswoman I am a businesswoman yeah, <laughs> yeah so it's tra- yeah, yeah it's grown with you hasn't it um, and yeah it's a really lovely story behind that so I completely understand you can't pick 100% um, but yeah <laughs> that, that is that is brilliant um, the one of the questions was around um, do you just start design um, your designs with things in mind for them to be used for or it sounds a little bit more to me that you get inspired by something to then create that design yeah is that right or do you have things in mind that you know you're using for and yeah what do you mean um, doing a design just for a pair of curtains or something um, but no yeah the so answer you, would be definitely Definitely not. Um, always, you know, with, with, with the heron and this, you, you design um, a, um, a design um, and then it gets put onto different mediums because you don't really know where it's going to end up. You know, um, you have that conversation. No. Oh, that look nice and wallpaper. Did that? What I have learned, and this has been very interesting for, for me personally, about, about the different and how, how you repeat a pattern um, and it is something that I get asked quite a lot because we use there's a couple of companies there's a fabric sort of printing company and a wallpaper company that I use when I was just literally doing it in the chateau and lots of people ask me about about that and we we feed that out and then and then afterwards they say oh and could you just tell me how you do a repeat <laughs> or they say how you actually made that which is interesting and that's been absolutely fascinating because not every design works on wallpaper and not every design works on um on curtains but every design works on a cushion <laughs> yeah well that, that's good to know because one of the questions that we, I was going to come on to later um, but it seems quite fitting now is someone was asking what advice um, you'd give for a complete beginner who would like to put their designs onto um whether it's cushion or, or fabric are there things that you've learned along the way that you think oh, actually I completely stay clear about now because it doesn't work um well well, yes. I mean, if it is just for your for your house um, and you was doing wallpaper, mm-hmm. I would definitely think about about how big your repeat is. Um, you know, when when I did the wallpaper museum um, material in the uh, hallway, um, which was quite a tricky job, I think I had a repeat pattern of about two hundred and fifty centimeters. <laughs> Because I was so, I wanted to include so many, and I'd never do that again. So you know, no. try, and keep it small, try and get your repeat to about fifty. You learn from your mistakes, though, don't you? <laughs> I won't do no, that again. Um, do you? Do, do, yeah. And <laughs> um, there was a lovely question which I quite liked. Is that do you have a design idea that you'd love to do, um, but you don't have the right place for it? Um, or have you got something in mind that's brewing maybe for your next collection? Um, and that was from Maria Edgar. Oh, do you know there's so many there's so many angles um of what I love that I wouldn't would like to do um I don't I mean I brought them down because you know lots of people know me from um Escape to the Chateau you know that's when I sort of launched onto telly but you know I had I had a past <laughs> and and I um and I've got the you know this isn't a pr- promotion but this is sort of like to to sort of prove the concept you know my my tea party book my sweets book it's very playful it's very um it's very sort of fun fair it's oh um yeah. and there's a couple of things I, I think I'd love to do um a kids collection being really sort of circus and fun fair themes um and also something that I haven't explored because I feel that if I do it I've got to do it so well is I'd love to do something oriental shimwazari um design Mm -hmm. but there's been a lot of it around and I think if I do it um I've got to do it amazingly and I think I could end up working on that a year yeah no <laughs> it's one for, one for another for a rainy day that you need um a lot of time for. yeah and yeah, that's get another year on our hands <laughs> yes yeah definitely um one of the questions we had um was from jackie taylor um and she wanted to know a little bit about um where you've come from and how you've got into what you're doing now um she was asking around did you take courses lessons in art um crafts and sewing or are you self-taught um I'm a bit of both. So I am um, mainly self-taught. However, um, being me and wanting to always know that little bit more, because I'm that old when I was learning, the internet wasn't. Yeah, that's just gone. Um, I think I'm leaving you again. 
Oh, I've got you back. I've got you back. So, yeah, I did, I did a year of tailoring, um, decided that, that that I did not like that, didn't have any fingertips. Um, and um, um, just so, so I did learn some technical stuff um, as well. Realised that I wasn't a great pattern cutter because I'm dyslexic and I always kept getting, you know, the, the, the back left spur about my always muddled up. Um, but, but actually um, learned, learned a lot of stuff. But before that, yeah, home tool, you know, and, and, and if you want to do something nowadays, there's so much information at your fingertips. There's no excuses. Yeah, definitely. Was there something that you'd say that inspired you um, to get going in the, and what inspired you to keep your passion in the, the first instance for you to actually explore a little bit more into those arts and crafts? Um, well, you know, mum um, had a, a dining table that always had our sewing machine on it, right? We always had dinner on our laps <laughs> because my mum was always doing things. And number one, she loved yeah. doing it. Um, but but number two, we grew up with not a lot of money and there was a need to, you know, make curtains and, and, and clothes, you know, because I, I couldn't afford um, X, Y and Z. Um, and I think as I, as I got older and, and, you know, my love of vintage started when I started going around for all the charity shops um, and boot fairs and stuff. And I've not always done things because uh, um, because. I think why my mum did it. Number one, I've enjoyed it. And number two, it's always saved money and you can get, you know, amazing things. And it feels good. It's a nice thing to do, you know, to, to make something yourself. Yeah, definitely. And people, quite, a lot of people quite use it for like the therapeutic reasons because actually it takes their mind off things. Um, so I think that it's um, a brilliant way and it, it makes a lot of people happy, um, definitely. And if you can do something that you enjoy, then you're only going to be happier, aren't you? Yeah. That, that, that is it, you know. And we can all, look, let's face it, we can all go and get a disposable cushion, can't we? And yet, if we make one, especially if, if you have a young family, crafting with your children and, and doing that sort of thing, it's really special bonding, uh, which, is, which is quite a nice thing. Yeah, no, it really is. Um, so there was a question from Lisa Hennings, um, and she asked, um, she wants to begin making her own clothes and soft furnishings, so she's a complete beginner. But where do you begin and what equipment do you recommend starting with? So thinking about a complete beginner, how do you, yeah, how do you even get started? Well, you can get yourself a sewing machine for not a lot of money, secondhand. You know, they're actually very good now. Um, yeah. I, you've got to invest in a pair of scissors. I had to bring these down. I keep these up in my treasure. These are my scissors when I was 18 and I was living in East London and I was paying rent and it was 87 pound a week. And I spent 32 pound on these scissors. It was a week's rent and I still have them today. <laughs> and they are still, I swear, the sharp. So having a good pair of scissors, you know, in, invest, Dick, Dick always says, um, buy once, cry once. Now, you know, there's all the little bits, um, the, the sort of rippers and um, and tape measures, etc. But one of the things I, I personally think that you shouldn't forget um, is is an iron. You know, having a really good iron <laughs> is a great thing when you're doing sewing because you've got so much and, and, and move so much into place. Sort of when you know when you're actually doing it. Brilliant. No, I think that, yeah, definitely. Um, I think those things are really helpful. And Gemma, start with a cushion, you yeah. know, <laughs> or a bag. Something or something. Easy to get together. Yeah, straight lines. You know, that I Dorothy made her first cushion. She's six. I bought her a number of tiny little cute sort of little vintage sewing machines, all of this big. Um, uh uh. She was on mummy's sewing machine. <laughs> <laughs> she was the real deal. <laughs> But, you know, she just made a, a little sort of like, like sort of that, you know, the um, envelope cushions. They're so easy to make and, and they, really they take seconds. And then once you get yourself confident, honestly, you can do a lot with a straight line and a zigzag stitch. <laughs> Brilliant. Lisa, if you do get going and you make yourself a cushion, let us know and make sure you tag us in it because we'd love to see what you're getting up to. Um, thank you for that, Angel. Um, the next one was from Julie Loretta. Um, she asked, have you ever mixed traditional and modern um, fabrics, furniture, decor successfully? Um, and if so, what are your tips to make sure it doesn't look like a car crash of styles? <laughs> well, 
I'm either the best person or the worst person to ask this question because that's all that I do. <laughs> so, um, and, and, you know, the thing is with your style is it's subjective, isn't it? And, and actually, you know, I say it all the time. I even say it to me. Look, if I like it, I don't care. <laughs> so if, if she likes it, um, I think that's that's where you've got to be. If you go into a room and it makes her happy, that's great. I mean, tips for, for, for it, you know, I actually layer the rooms. You know, I'll start with a vision um, and then, you know, I'll go to the charity shops and I might buy this. And, and actually a find in a charity shop could inspire the, the decor in a, in a whole room, for instance. You know, I might go with that thing because I found one piece that I've absolutely loved. And it is good to have a plan before you start. But less is more, you know, you can build stuff up. Keep it, if you're going to mix, keep it, don't clutter it too much and, and then let it grow, let it breathe, live in it and let it breathe. Would you start with the walls or first and plan around the walls or would you start with what's inside it first, so your furniture, or would you go with just whatever you find first and you love and build the room around it? Well, that, that's sort of the point. So I've done all of those and above. And what, <laughs> sometimes I've said, right, this room, like in a potato suit, that was very, very different. Like, let's take the bathroom, for instance. It would, had the most incredible light. I sound, I can't believe when I taught myself, you know, shut up. But it, I would go in there and it was just, you know, the dappled light coming through. And I just, you know, I knew that I sort of wanted salmons and greens and, you know, Dick's laughing at me. But I knew, <laughs> I felt the colours that I wanted to, to be. Um, but then you know the the, the boot and the boudoir um, uh, was again you know I wanted it to sort of um, be dark. Um, but the botanical kind of revolved around a bath and a bed that yeah. I got in the charity shop. So <laughs> so go with whatever works for you then. Oh, yeah, yeah, perfect, brilliant. And um, there's a few questions about sh- more of your chateau life and what you've been getting up to and how. How sort of the inspiration started with that? So I'm going to kick off with those. Um, the first one was from Tracy George, and she asked, when you bought the chateau and first visited it, um, did you know exactly what each room would work, look like in terms of the decor, or has that evolved over time? So no, um, no, I had no idea. No. <laughs> and you have to. It's that thing. You have to stand and be in a space for a period of time before you can really feel it. Um, you can, you know, you, you've got to feel the light, sort of like ha- how, you know, how it feels in there. Um, and, yeah, I guess at our room, um, well, no, not our room, the honeymoon suite. So, no, no, I didn't have a clue. And, and I did one yeah. room at a time. I tackled one room at a time. That's definitely the answer. That's a really nice way to do it, though, because I think people can get a little bit overwhelmed, whether they're starting yeah. a big renovation or even a small one. And actually spending time in the space um, can really help. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What we did know was like the technical stuff and we had to work that out before we got here. So we knew um, we'd already planned. and So we knew what room would be a bathroom and we knew what room would be our suite because Dick had to put the um, sort of <laughs> the underground utilities in that that actually was the majority of the work in the house. Um, so so I, knew, I knew that. But that's sort of at that point, that was as far as, as we'd got to. Perfect. Um, is there one of your projects that you've done at the Chateau? Would you say there's a project that was your most challenging? Um, Poppy Kane was asking, which was your most challenging if you've got one? Or if they mm. all come with their own little challenges? Yeah, I mean, they, they all do. Um, and that's that's part of it. I think the um, the hallway outside, which um, was done in the Wallpaper Museum fabric, because that, that was something that I um, naively thought would save a lot of money and time, um, so we wouldn't have to plaster it. <laughs> but it was really, um, it was really tricky. And then we kind of, because it goes through the servant stairs, um, and, and at the top, it, it was near, near on impossible, and Tick had to build some scaffolding just just, just for that yeah. <laughs> it's a nice challenge for dick then as well <laughs> yeah oh yeah always <laughs> my technical advice <laughs> <laughs> do you have an absolute favorite project to date um that you've loved and will continue to love or is there too many to oh, from? no uh, you know what i just oh okay it's a bit cheesy but 
I, I've loved it all. And, and what I think, um, I, I think what I've loved most is that we have made our home into a business and it still feels like a family home as well. Yeah, that is, that is so lovely. Um, and you will enjoy living there for many, many years um, as it grows old with both Forever. Yeah, forever. Um, and the kids as well. It's lovely to see that the kids growing up in this space as well, because I'm sure they adore it just as much as you guys do. Yeah, they do. Dorothy's already put her... Um, she wanted to move into the domes um, when she grows up, and now she's moved out to one of uh, next to Dick's potting shed. Um, oh. And she's already put her request in for a swimming pool. Um, <laughs> I'm sure there'll be more requests to come in the years. <laughs> and what was the first room um, that you, you fully finished um, in the chateau? Um, that was from Charlotte Cross on Instagram. Thank you, Charlotte. Um, I think it was our, would you say it's our kitchen downstairs? Fully finished, yeah. Fully finished, yeah. It was our kitchen downstairs because we had to cater our wedding um, and it was... It was a yeah. priority to get it finished so that that could sort of happen. Um, and then um, and then we did a sort of a first pass of the of the sort of um, the ground, uh, the first floor. Um, and the first room that we got yeah. finished um, to make a business was the honeymoon suite. And it all happened sort of quite quickly in the first year. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you kept busy um, just to try and get it done, I guess. Well, to open up and start making money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or well, yeah, making brilliant. money, bringing money in to pay for bills. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, what room in the chat are you currently working on? Um, that was Emmy's Vintage Cottage, and I've seen you join Emmy, so hello, and thank you for sending you a question. Give us a wave if you're here. Um, yeah, so what room, you, what are you currently working on in the chateau? Um, what are we working on? In the saddle. We're doing we're doing a little bit of a revisit into our salon. Um, we've got some bits over by by the boat. Um, Dorothy, as I say, she's done her architect's plans for the swimming pool, so <laughs> don't know when that's going to happen. And we're also looking at some of the big projects that we didn't sort of have um, that didn't have the money for. You know, we've yeah. got our roof, got the windows. You know, there's this will be a forever list of things to do. Yes. Yeah, you won't be short of anything at all. Um, I completely understand that one. Um, is there anything that you've done in the chateau that you you would change in hindsight? Or have you I mean, no. not something that you can change, but um, yeah, is there anything? That you know? uh, no, you know, some no. I think there will always be things that that you know feel a little bit more successful than others. You but repainted the salon. I didn't totally <laughs> repaint the salon. Oh, I. I didn't like the colour of the salon and I sort of, when it went away, I kind of repainted it. <laughs> Just made it a little bit nicer. Is that, yeah, is that, made it a bit glittery or lustery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Well, we've come to the end of our questions that you guys sent in. If there's any more questions, do pop them in um, the questions, the comments below and we will, um, we will get to them. I think we've had a couple as we've been coming along, which um, Emma's just going to sh- come and share with them. Um, we had one from F. Farn. Do you have any tips on picking designs for curtains? Um, mm, I think you've got to, um, again, look at the light, look at your surroundings, um, and um, and also kind of know what, what you want to um, achieve from it, because I'm, I'm mm. assuming for many people that in their bedroom they would want a much sort of heavier, you know, we're backing on curtains, and in in their living room or sort of, you know, they might want something a lot lighter, so, you know, yeah. and also give, give a go at, at making them yourself. Yeah, that's a really good tip, really good. Um, because I think once you've made something for it, putting your taste, I think we just talked about it actually, and um, actually you have that satisfaction of, and you really enjoy looking at them, you enjoy your interiors as well. It's making yeah. it a little bit extra special. Exactly. Yeah, perfect. And um, there was one question that's asking how the new puppy is. Hello? Hello? Can you hear us? Hello. Oh, how, how big is she? How, how old is she now? 
she's uh, se- seven months. Um, it's my first oh, dog, yeah. and uh, um, obviously Arthur and Dorothy. Dick, Dick has had to train um, the dog, me, Arthur, Dorothy, my mum and dad. <laughs> it's been hell. <laughs> Oh, you've had fun doing it, I'm sure. <laughs> I did just see a question pop in around um, if Angel's got any new designs coming in. Um, if you um, missed the beginning of um, this video, we will be saving it for later because um, we did go through some of Angel's new designs, um, which have just launched. Um, but yeah, as in it's, we're just going to um, finish it now. Um, but. For those who, I'm sure lots have been watching the new Escape to the Chateau, Make to Amend, um, which is on tonight at eight o'clock. Have you got any sneak peeks of what we can expect this evening? <laughs> Angel, <Angela Dick. laughs> um, I think it's the doghouse in there tonight. Yeah, there's a wonderful family that have done a little doghouse. So, so look out for the potagerie fabric. Oh, and, and actually, that was the fabric that I originally done because we weren't buying anything new so I had some stuff from an old chair I made and I made the mistake and enlarged it too much but so I made a dog bed um (laughs) it's a lovely show it it was just such a joy to work on just because of our uh, contributors um were were brilliant um and there's a really lovely um fat family that do a craft room and it's just you're gonna love it yeah Oh, we can't wait to see it. Um, I really loved last week's um, The Teenage Girl's Bedroom. I absolutely love that. And I, I myself was in tears too. Um, it was just so lovely to see that transformation. You know, her mood board um, was inspiring, you know, for a 13 year old who had done a presentation for her parents. Um, and you know, you know something, the contributors, they filmed everything themselves on the phone because it was a, it's a lockdown show um, and we filmed everything here. And they have to get total credit for that because it's really hard to try and capture something to look really, really good. You know, it always looks sort of better in real, uh, real life. And, and they did an amazing job. Yeah, they really did. They really did. We've had, I'm just going to ask you one more question because we've had quite a lot of people ask is where do you get um, your kimonos from? As a lot of people are asking. Do you make them yourself or do you, know, where do you get them? Well, um, I, I used to get them from um, a shop uh, in the older days where you could travel in London. Sorry, say that again, Angel, you you just cut out. So it's on Hanbury Street in East London, and the shop is called Attica. Oh, perfect. That's brilliant. But I also... um, I also, on the internet, all the time, searching. Yeah, I'm sure there's loads out there as well. Um, Thank you ever so much, Angel. And thank you, Dick, for helping for technical reasons. Um, Thanks for having having me both. No, thank Take care, you. Um, thank yeah. you. Bye. 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 Bye.